Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having an awesome day. I had a great morning. I'm having a great afternoon. My day kind of started off crummy because my wife was like, all right, I know you got paid today, but we're done with shrimp and fish, so you can't, don't buy anymore. And I was like, oh, bummer. So I went out and I bought a, ha I bought a dozen golden back neocaradinas. All right. And I bought a half dozen of blue dream neocaradinas. All right. Now, I was like, you know, I'll just tell a white lie. If she notices, I'll say one gay birth today. Yeah. Um, and then also, I didn't even need plants today. So I bought four cryptocorns. All right, I was only gonna get one, but then I was like, "But what if you want to look at it more than once?" Dustin, you're right. So I bought three more. So uh, cryptocorn bonanza uh, and the uh, newly born shrimp. I'll be dealing with that. This is gonna be my fun after talking to all you uh, subscribers. So let's move on. I've got a lot to cover today. I promised I'd answer a bunch of questions. So let's do the call outs first. First call out. It's going to go to Dave from the dark side. Uh, thank you for your uh, request. Um, and I'm going to fulfill that today. You wanted specifically how to know, uh, uh, how to propagate, um, what, uh, weapons. Yeah, weapons. That's right. So we're going to do that. So I'll, uh, I'll get to you first. And then a shout out to Preston Woodward. He didn't request anything, but he just made a comment. So I, uh, I say hey and thank you to everyone who comments or subscribes. And the last one is G Family. Yo! Thanks for all your comments and questions. I'm going to get to all of them. You have a bunch, so I'm saving you for last. So, uh, stick around for that. And I've got, I've got examples and, uh, proof. You know, for all of your questions, because yours are specific. So I'm going to tell you what I know, and then I'm literally going to show you. So nobody can dispute it, because if they give you a different answer, say, well, I've seen otherwise. All right, so uh, uh, going to need some coffee for this. All right. So Dark Side Dave. Let's get to you first. We're going to be propagating some repins. And I'm going to pull it. I'm going to snip it directly out of the tank. And then I'm going to bring it over to you and show you, uh, you know, where I snipped it and why. All right, one reppin. I'll do. I'll do two. I'm not gonna. I have a bunch of questions to answer, so I don't want to sit here just propagating the whole time. Oh, here we go. All right, Dave. So, here is my repin. Now, yes, you can carpet with this plant. And to do so, uh, it's, it's really simple. If you look really close, if you look really close, you'll see that every couple centimeters or whatever, there'll be a node. And where that node is, there'll be two leaves coming off of that. All right, so when you snip it, you want to snip from the top just above one of the nodes. All right, now all the leaves leading up to the node above it, you're going to pull off. So I'm doing that now and I'm going to show it to you. All right, so... 
here we are. If you'll see where that second node is, I pulled all the leaves off underneath it. Oh, there's still one little tiny one here. All right. And you're essentially just going to stick it in the dirt right next to where, um, you know, you, you cut it from. And on this bare bottom where we just removed the leaves, it's now going to start throwing out new roots. It'll take it a few days, but you'll you'll see it get into that. And I'm going to show you on one more that I had snipped from the near the top. Remember when you snip from the top, count a couple nodes down, okay, and then snip right above one of the nodes. And like I did the other one, this one, I'm going to pluck the leaf off, pluck the other leaf off, and then there. This will start a whole new plant. All right, and if you give it about a month, your repins will get you know about two inches or so. That's about it, and then you just keep snipping off the top and dropping it down to the next one. And remember, snip just above the node, and then pull the two leaves off that are right above it, and then you just slip it back into your tank. Right next to where you got it, and I got this whole front side carpeted like that. Alright? Okay. Oh, I need to dry my hands off. I don't want to make this video last last forever. There are a lot of questions to cover. Alright, so, uh, I, and if you have any other questions, Dave, just go ahead and ask. But, I mean, that that's, you know, pretty cut and dry. Uh, what to do there with that. Oh, and actually, I need to get these uh, yellow golden backs starting to acclimate to their tank. Because that's going to be my bundle of fun whenever I'm done with you guys. Alright, okay, so, uh, G Family! You uh you you had a lot of questions for me, so let's start off with um, your red root floaters. You said you switched them from one tank to a smaller tank, and that um, they're essentially the older leaves are melting and dying off. All right, uh, that's perfectly normal with the, with any plant, even with floaters. Um, you know, you have a plant and a, a leaves over time, whether it's their time or not you know, will just naturally start to melt and fall off. You want to clip those off. But if you feel like they're falling off uh, too soon, like it's just melt melting randomly, it's probably because um, red root floaters actually prefer a lot more light than regular, than other floaters, green floaters like frog bit, uh, water lettuce. Um, the red ones in particular like much, uh, a little bit brighter light but also, they need a lot of iron. This is what I got from uh, Aquarian Co-op, but you can also get it um, just iron from uh, from uh, API, which is a product you can get at uh, PetSmart. And actually, their iron supplement is great. It's half iron, half potassium, and both of those red root floaters love the hell out of potassium and iron. They keep their red by lots of iron, Okay, and to stop holes from getting into them, it, you know, if you ever notice like a little dark yellowing hole that starts to get larger and larger and then like black around that hole too, that's the potassium. Floaters eat the hell out of potassium and then red root floaters, lots of iron, okay? So, uh, brighten your lights, start adding some iron, liquid iron and uh, trim off the dead leaves and if you're not already, it's going to need more potassium. Now, nitrates. You asked a question about nitrates. How many for a plant to take? Um, you're going to see so much mixed information. Forget about all of that. Here's how it works with nitrates. I don't care what anyone says. Plants need nitrates. They feed off of it. They, I mean, they'll feed off of ammonia, but in order to, for them to have exceptional growth in the tank, they also need lots of nitrates. All right, now fish and shrimp 
can actually tolerate um, nitrates um, up to as high as 80 to 100 parts per million. I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to take my uh, test strip here. I don't have time to be doing the liquid stuff on you. Now look, I'm going to come over here to this tank. I do not eliminate my nitrates. Unless I see they're like at 120, I may do a water change. So here's my testing strip. I'm going to dip it in. Give it three swirls. All right. So I'm holding it in front of you the whole time. And then I'm going to show you the chart so you can see for yourself. And that tank is established now. That's That tank's over three months. Nothing has changed. I only do a water change when I see my uh, uh, total dissolved solids goes above 300 parts per million or I notice ammonia, which ammonia is not a problem in my situation. When you have a tank that's fully stocked with plants, and that's what you want. You want plants through your entire tank. They will take care of everything that happens in there. They'll take care of all the excess nitrates. They'll take care of all the excess ammonia. You want plants way up here and your fish way down here. Like in a 40 gallon, I have 12 fish over there. I'm not gonna go above that. All right, so we're getting close on this on this test and uh, G family, this is for you. I'm going to show you, we just picked a random tank and I'm gonna show you how high the nitrates are in this one. All right, and the testing strip has come to a stop. Now this top one, let's see if I can get that to focus. Well, the top one is nitrates. Uh, can I get it to focus anywhere? Anyway, here's my nitrates. Look, it's between 50, no, it's right at. 50 parts per million. That's 30 above what what you'll a, a lot of fish keepers and aquascapers will tell you uh, never to go above 20, and some will tell you you shouldn't even have any. Who whoever's walking around saying that needs to get punched in the face. Okay. For one thing, it's impossible to keep nitrates out of there. They're going to happen because nitrates uh, nitrates come from organic waste. Your fish take a dump, the plants are going to absorb the ammonia, and the nitrates come out of there. So, <laughs> it, it's just, yes, you're going to have nitrates, and you want more of them, put more plants. Um, the more organic stuff you got going on in there, the more nitrates that are going to happen. And the less, less frequent you do your water changes, the more nitrates will build up. I'll let mine get to 100, sometimes 120, before I change it. Now... The misconception is why it would kill a fish is, is because you wouldn't want to take a fish that's been sitting in 10 parts per million nitrates and then throw them in a tank that has 100 parts, uh, uh, 100 parts per million of nitrates. You need to acclimate them for hours and hours. So put the bag in and then all day just slowly add driplets at a time and uh, slowly allow them to acclimate to those nitrates. And then when they're in there... Fine, okay, yeah, you don't want to shock them with a bunch of nitrates, but you acclimate them to that, okay? So if anyone's like, yeah, I had 100 nitrates and my fish died, well, did you just throw it into Nitrate City Central, or did you acclimate it? All right, so that answers your uh, nitrate question. Yes, it benefits the, uh, the fish as well, and it is most definitely needed by your plants. All right, now for uh, your... Question about cardinals, um, G family. I do a lot of cardinals too. Yes, you can carpet with them. If you can uh, see back here, I've done a whole section of carpeting. And they can get up to uh, 8 inches in length. Now, um, height-wise, they can get up to 8 inches. Now, your question about them being a uh, stem plant or a root feeder. Um, they would be technically a stem plant, but um, they they also feed like a root feeder. They have they do have deep roots that will go under the substrate, 
And those roots that you see coming off the side, I'm going to show you right now. Those are the spots where you can propagate. So what you're doing is on a, a cardinal plant, you're looking at the same spot where you'll see two leaves and then a section and then two leaves and then a section. All right. So you don't want to go down. You want to go down as far down as where you see your first set of roots. And that's where you can, that's where you can trim. So I'm going to trim some right now. I wish I could hold the camera and show you, but like I said, start from the top and look down at stock until you see its first set of, of roots. Uh. All right, and yes, you can carpet with these. They won't just start making a blanket on their own. You need to do the propagation part. So, here's my, here's my cardinal, all right? I looked down until I saw my first section of roots, which is, you know, right there. All right, my first section of roots, and the same thing with the repens, except this is a little bit different than the repens because we're, we go based off the roots, not just the nodes. So, here, we're gonna leave all those roots I'm going to pluck off the bottom leaves so the roots can get into the tank. All right, there's one long root. And then to give this uh, puppy a jump start, snip the tip of the root. Okay, now if you, if you haven't heard in my videos before, the reason why you snip the tips of roots is because when you start a propagation process with the plant, it goes in immediate shock. It's not happy. It doesn't want to go through that. Okay. So when you trim the roots, what that does is it signals the plant through that roof to start absorbing as much nutrients as possible and to do this, to repair itself. Um, or in this case, to start over and make a new plant. Um, so as you can see, I cleaned up the bottom of the leaves and these roots are going to or what's going to go into the substrate and it'll start a new stock and on on here in that section uh, let's see if I can get it back here that was just one that was just one packet of uh, Cardinals that I bought at PetSmart and I I carp I carpeted that whole thing and yeah, they'll just, they'll keep growing. Uh, surprise, even though you can carpet with it, it'll surprisingly grow about eight inches in length. Um, and the deeper your tank is, the taller they will grow because they're trying to get to the light. Uh, so if your light is really bright, that will reduce how tall they get. If your light is really dim, then they will get even taller because they are always trying to get to the light and as soon as they this is why you would you're having a difficult time understanding how tall they actually get because it depends on how bright your light is so the deeper the tank and the lower the light the taller they're gonna grow because they're trying to get to that light and then vice versa you know so the brighter the light they don't need to get as tall because they're getting the amount that they want all right, so uh, this video has already gone way too long. I think I covered everyone's questions. I hope you got a pen and wrote some of this down. If not, you can play it as much as you want. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all my subscribers, and I appreciate all these questions, man. This was fun. I, um, I love doing that. Now I'm going to get to my, uh, my, uh, my plants and uh, my shrimp. All right. Have a fantastic day.